As I said, my name is Nick Liberati, and I'm representing the Immuno Staining Well Plate Capstone team. So, the immune staining process involves bonding antibody markers to proteins within an organic specimen to visualize interactions of those proteins throughout the sample. Um, immune staining is similar to the process of wood staining. Um, they're similar in the aspect that they both create different visual representations through the same base material. So, for instance, staining the same uh, tissue with two different types of antibodies will result in two completely different images, the same way that two different stains can create a different image on the same piece of wood. So on the left, you can see a picture of mouse brain tissue soaking in a clear antibody solution. But after the immunostaining process in the image on the right, um, researchers can view a colorful image under a microscope that will provide them with valuable information about the location of specific proteins. Our client, Dr. Mark Gabriel, is a JMU biology professor using immunostaining to study uh, brain development in mice. Staining allows him to visualize the location of proteins within the brain as an indicator of complications during brain development. Once Dr. Gabriel understands the way the protein should link in the brain, he can then look for discrepancies within that protein linkage when something such as hearing or vision does not properly develop. The executive request from our client was to design and manufacture a device that would minimize the amount of volume or the volume of antibody solution required to run a trial. So in his current device on the right, um, he currently uses antibody solution would be represented by the red fluid. So any solution that's currently outside of this grid system is wasted with each trial. And with antibodies costing anywhere from hundreds of thousands of dollars per milligram, his current system is simply throwing money out the window. So to address this problem, we designed two concepts that will reduce the volume of antibody solution required each trial, thereby saving our user money. Both devices provide the user with the benefits of serial ordering and free flotation. Our deep fryer model on the left will organize tissues in a grid system horizontally, while the stacker model on the right organizes them vertically. So the idea of serial ordering will allow the user to organize tissues in a specific manner so that after the staining process, they can be recreated. Reflotation will ensure that the tissues within each well are exposed to antibody solution on all surfaces, yielding the most accurate results. Additionally, these concepts both feature a modular design, meaning they can be connected together to minimize space as well as allowing the user to vary the amount of tissue stain per trial. So with our concepts finalized, where do we go from here? <clears throat> well, the material the devices are made out of would prove to have a large impact on the quality of images resulting from the immunostaining process. As such, we specifically sought out to identify as many materials as we could find that exhibit both chemically inert and hydrophobic properties. So through this research, it became apparent to us that glass was always going to be our best option. But unfortunately, through further research, we found that manufacturing either of these designs out of glass would be well over the budget we had intended to spend. And so we began to look for cheaper alternatives. This path ultimately led us to surgical grade steel, aluminum, and ceramic coatings. So antibody affinity is defined as the likelihood that antibodies will stick to the material as opposed to the tissue. The more antibodies that stick to the material, the less that will bind with the tissue, resulting in lower quality images. And lower quality images will require the user to run more trials, ultimately spending more money on antibodies. So with this in mind, Testing would go on to assess the interaction between our tested materials and the antibody solution. 
Materials that exhibit low antibody affinity levels would be imaged with little to no fluorescence in them. The fluorescent markers can be identified by bright specks or streaks in the images here. With that, the best analytic approach given our timeline was to assess these material images qualitatively side by side to make the distinctions that one material exhibits more or less fluorescence than another. This analysis brought the team to the conclusion that should glass prove to be over our manufacturing budget, ceramic coating would be our most viable option. So it's important to note that the devices we've designed are not exclusive to our client, Dr. Gabriel. They can be used by researchers across many different fields because of their ability to accommodate varying types and sizes of tissues. Our devices will generate higher quality images to advance research in various areas, such as cancer development, brain trauma, and is even being currently used to research the COVID-19 virus, all while saving our user thousands of dollars of money on antibody solutions. While our work has come to an end, we've compiled the information we've gained throughout our project and generated a plan for a zone to build off the information that we've gathered. So thank you for your time. And if you'd like to learn any more about our prototypes or our processes, I'd be happy to answer any questions.